Father, we thank you for another time before your feet. We thank you for your grace, your power, your love and care. We thank you for the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. We thank you for that blood that was shed on Calvary. We thank you for the efficacious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you because it is written that we are kept by the power of God. Thank you for your keeping power. Accept our thanks in the name of Jesus. This morning, as many of your people as are gathered in this service, lay your hands of fire and power upon them in the name of Jesus. And not each person by your power. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let's have a seat. God bless you. For some time in the past, we have been looking at keys to sin in the spirit. Keys to sin in the spirit. We've covered a lot of ground. You shall expect you to meditate upon and understand. But the bottom line is this. That is a physical world. That is a spiritual world. The spiritual world dictates what happens in the physical world. If there is war, if there is turbulence, if there is bloodshed in the physical, it was decided in the spiritual. More than at any other time, we need to start praying the open my eyes prayer. Open my eyes, open my eyes, open my eyes. We go a little bit further in that this morning. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Ephesians 6, 10. Paul had been discussing many things. He now says in verse 10. Finally, that is in conclusion. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. These are not pieces of advice. There are two serious commands. Command one, be strong in the Lord. Command two, be strong in the power of his might. How you say, but I'm weak. The Lord says, don't be weak. Be strong. He says, like the weak says, I am strong. He didn't say, be strong in anger. He didn't say, be strong in confusion. This said be strong in malice. In fact, look at 1 Corinthians. Chapter 14. Verse 20. 1 Corinthians. 14. 20. Be strong in the Lord. Not be strong in anger. Not be strong in gluttony. Not be strong in worldliness. Be strong in the Lord. In First Corinthians chapter 14. 
verse 20 Say, brethren be not children in understanding albeit in malice be ye children when it comes to malice be ye children don't be strong but in understanding be men this is what the bible is talking about how then can you be strong in the lord the key is very simple the key is in the final prayer we pray anytime we close the service that's, that's where the key is everybody here with a loud voice can we share the grace in fellowship let us go your voice is not loud enough the key of intimacy with God is being in fellowship with the Holy Spirit communion with the Holy Spirit is the key to being intimate with God by being intimate with the Holy Spirit and by listening to the Holy Spirit you become intimate with God it says and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit fellowship that is that Holy Spirit has to become your friend your closest friend closer to you than anything anybody but you say the Holy Spirit has never spoken to me no, I've never, I don't think I've had the Holy Spirit before. He has spoken to you. Yes. He He's speaking to you. He has spoken to you. That inner voice telling you you have not prayed. That is his voice. That inner voice saying you did not participate in that fasting that's his voice that inner voice telling you you have not read your bible today that is that voice that's the voice that inner voice that comes to you when you are sitting in the bus stand up and begin to preach that is the voice that inner voice telling you that what you have just said is a lie that is the voice he's talking to you he speaks to you but whether you realize it or not or take it serious or not is another problem another problem brother johnson woke up in the morning was about to go to work he headed towards one bus stop but that voice said go to the second one go to the second one See, but i don't normally use that second one i use the second one when all the buses are filled up the buses are empty. I want to go to this first one. The voice again kept Amari, go to the second one. He went to the first one. He entered a bus. And the next thing he remembered, he found himself in the hospital. I got there, I didn't know. That vehicle had somersetted several times. 
he fell out of the window and knocked his head on the ground when he opened his eyes say, where am I say, you are in the hospital your vehicle had an accident she said oh dear and that voice was telling me go to bus stop number two go to bus stop number two I'm praying for somebody here the ability to connect with the Holy Ghost so that you and that Holy Ghost will be the closest friend receive that ability in the name of Jesus Are you understanding what I'm saying? He's talking to you. But whether you realize it or not, it's another thing. The Holy Ghost is the third person in the Godhead. As God the Father, as God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, which people call Trinity. Trinity. God the Father. God the Son. God the Holy Spirit. If you are a very careful reader of the Bible, as you read the Bible, you find that the fact that there are three persons in the Godhead is proved by many verses in Scripture. For example, if you read Genesis chapter 1, you find a statement like this let us make man let us make man in our own image so let us means that there is more than one person and when Adam and the wife went and ate the fruit Again, the statement came. Say, behold, this man is become as one of us. One of us. When they were building the Tower of Babel, they were trying to build a tower that they want to touch the heavens. When they looked at the tower from heaven, Again, the word said, Let us go down and stop what they are doing. So, there are three persons in the Godhead. In Matthew chapter 3, verse 16, Matthew 3, 16, Matthew chapter 3. Verse 16. It says this. And Jesus. Matthew 3.16. And Jesus. When he was baptized. Went up straight away out of the water. And lo the heavens were open. Unto him. And he saw the spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. So all three are represented in those two verses. All three. Jesus was there as the son of God. The Holy Spirit came upon him as a dove. Then the voice of the father said, this is my beloved son. In whom I am well pleased. And when Jesus was going away, he made disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So when you read the Bible very well, 
most of the time you see god the father is speaking speaking god the son is doing why god the holy spirit is manifest bible said in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth and the earth was without form and void darkness was upon the face of the deep then he introduced the holy spirit the spirit of god moved upon the waters and god said let there be light and that was light again all three introduced so god the father is the source the holy spirit helps us to get to that our source the Bible says we know not how or what we should pray the way we should. But the Holy Spirit helps our infirmity and teaches us how to pray. Why am I saying all this to you? <laughs> Without being close to the Holy Spirit who is your helper, you remain weak spiritually. We share the grace at every service, but only few people understand what it means by and sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Do you really fellowship with the Holy Spirit? Is the Holy Spirit your friend? Sometimes when some believers misbehave, I said, didn't you hear the voice of the Holy Spirit telling you this is bad? Did you hear it? But they say, well, I, I just did what came to my mind. <laughs> so if you don't cultivate friendship with the Holy Spirit, you don't cultivate fellowship with Him, you will make tragic mistakes. You want to begin to see into the spirit realm? Your best friend is the Holy Ghost. Connect him. He's our spy. He's the one who shows us things. So God's executive agent in the world today is the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, Behold, I go unto the Father. So, but, but after I've gone, I will send you another comforter. The Holy Spirit is continuing the work that Jesus came to do on earth. Christians who have developed a steady prayer life. And who communicate and fellowship with the Holy Spirit are those who really know Jesus Christ. So the Holy Spirit is just not an experience of speaking in tongues, no. No, it's more than that. The Holy Spirit is a person, a personality. You need to develop communication and fellowship with him. And the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Communion with the Holy Ghost. Fellowship with the Holy Ghost. When you say communion with the Holy Ghost, we mean communicating with the Holy Spirit. Traveling together with the Holy Spirit. Transporting with the Holy Spirit. Spiritual life will be very hard. Please listen to me carefully. Spiritual life will be very hard for anyone who cannot communicate with the Holy Spirit. Your level of communication with the Holy Spirit has to be to develop, develop, and to be high. Many do not know how to connect with the Holy Ghost. 
so the work of the Holy Spirit in the life of the believer is so important and crucial that there are many names and symbols in the Bible for the Holy Ghost in John chapter 7 from verse 37 to 38 John chapter 7 37 to 38 you say I want to be hearing the voice of God the answer is communion with the Holy Spirit in John chapter 7 verse 37 in the last day that great day of the feast Jesus stood and cried saying if any man thirst read that scripture well I didn't say Jesus said mm, no. he cried if any man thirst let him come unto me and drink he that believeth on me as the scripture has said out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water so the bible gave a symbol of water to the holy spirit water is indispensable to the preservation of human life even right there where you are sitting the whole of your body is 60 to 70 percent water that's why you can remain alive for a long time without eating food but you cannot remain alive without drinking water you use water for cleaning you clean your body clean your clothes so the Holy Spirit is indispensable in the life of the believer the way water is indispensable not just speaking in tongues no we are going beyond that now as you talk to him he talks to you talk to him talk to you that's why you see some people saying uh, holy spirit you are welcome good morning holy spirit good evening holy spirit this, this shows communication the holy spirit is giving the symbol of fire fire Cloving tongues as a fire came down. And that Pentecost resulted in tongues of fire. Fire burns away that which is unwanted. Fire provides heat and light. Fire gives supernatural zeal. The sign of Christianity is not actually the cross. The sign of Christianity is the tongue of fire. The sign of Christianity cannot be the cross. Because if Jesus were to remain on that cross, we are all in trouble. But he rose from the dead. It's a fire. He said, Behold, someone is coming after me. The lashet of whose shoes I'm unfit to untie. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. So, a symbol of the Holy Ghost is fire. Fire is not gas. Fire is not liquid. Fire is not solid. Fire is fire. 
Fire has no respect for gravitational force. The Holy Ghost is fire. I want to pray one prayer now. Right there where you are. Whether it is convenient for the enemy or not. Receive fresh fire of the Holy Ghost. Receive it, 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 receive it. Let your amen roll like thunder. Receive it, 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 receive it. Let your amen roll like thunder. Receive it, receive it, receive that fresh fire, receive that fresh fire. My pocket kaya. Receive the fresh fire. In the name. Jesus. So the Holy Ghost is fire. The Bible also describes the Holy Ghost as wind. Wind. John chapter 3, verse 8. John 3 8. The wind blew it. Where it listed. And thou hearest the sound thereof. But canst not tell. Whence it cometh. And whither it goeth. So is everyone. That is born of the spirit. So the Holy Spirit is holy wind. Always a continuous motion. You can't cage it. You can't control its direction. The wind is never still. It's always in motion. This is what makes our hair fresh. The Holy Spirit is called wind. The Holy Spirit is also called oil. When we pray on anointing oil, it's just a symbol of the Holy Spirit. That's why when people are anointed in scripture, they are set aside. Elijah anointed Elisha. The anointing makes you a royal priesthood. A chosen generation, a peculiar person. You need oil to light the seven candles in the tabernacle. Meaning that only through the bright light of the Holy Spirit can the spiritual world be open to us who can see it for what it is. Oil is a lubricant. It prevents wears and tears by reducing friction. Oil is necessary for the preservation of life. The reason the life of many believers dry up like dead bones is because of the absence of the oil of the Holy Spirit. The Bible also calls it rain. If you read your Bible, you find later rain. The Holy Spirit is rain that refreshes, that brings products, fruits, vegetables, plantation on earth. Then the Holy Spirit is also likened to a dove. Dove is an emblem of peace. Emblem of peace. That's why when the 40 days flood was over, Noah sent out the dove. An emblem of peace. The, the first sign that the judgment of God was over was a dove. Signifying humility and meekness. A pure and harmless creature. The Holy Spirit is also likened to wine. 
Wine. Somebody wine. drinking wine. Be wine. Not wine that makes you drunk. But wine that gives you overflowing peace. That's what the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 5. Verse 18. Ephesians 5:18. It says this. And be not drunk with wine. Well in excess. But be filled with the spirit. Be drunken with the spirit. So the way to be strong in the Lord and to be intimate with the power of God is to move close to his spirit. The day you start talking to the Holy Spirit as a friend, you begin to experience spiritual evolution. You will therefore be doing yourself a lot of harm by just coming to church we are, you can't speak in tongues. You have not received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You are just coming to church. You should pray, Holy Ghost, fill me till I want no more. We can pray, Father, breathe on me the breath of the Holy Ghost. And when that anointing falls upon you, you will know. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit cannot come upon you and you say you don't know. You will certainly know. But there are a few things that blocks people from being intimate with the Holy Spirit. A few things they block people. It's those blockages we need to pray against. And we need to be careful with. Number one blockage. Unconfessing. Unconfessing. Bible says, see that covenant is sin shall not prosper. That is, the Bible issues a curse on those who are covering their sin. Say, they shall not prosper. I didn't write it. This is in the Bible. On confessing. Two. Lack of true repentance. I need do you know that there are some people they come to the house of God they in they out they in they out no change no change in their lives the way they are talking as unbelievers is the way they are still talking they are still drinking their beer quietly they see taking a lot of strange women to various hotels all over the place and come to church to sing and to pray. They have become salmon proof Christians. Everything you say doesn't register to them. They think that the God is not serious. Those ones, their conscience is already being seared with hot iron. They cannot be close to the Holy Ghost. Are you here? And you have no sorrow for your sin? You don't feel sorry when you do something wrong? Are you here? You commit sin and your conscience remains good. <laughs> ah, then you are far from the Holy Ghost. Far from the Holy Ghost. Three, third blockage. It's unforgiveness. When somebody has offended you, and you are not willing to forgive, you will block the spirit of God from being your friend. 
First blockage is involvement in witchcraft occult or, or demonic practices if you are still involved in all those things be far from the Holy Ghost so so far from the Holy Ghost five wrong attitude to others you have wrong attitude to others you are so so far from being intimate with the Holy Ghost for example failure to honor your parents the Bible says honor thy father and thy mother that it may be well with you and then you will live long on the earth so, meaning if you do not honor your father and your mother it will not be well with you i didn't write it in the bible and you will not live long that's what the bible is saying six so unbelief and doubt will block the Holy Spirit. Will block intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Seven is fear. The spirit of fear will prevent you from being intimate with the Holy Spirit. Eight. Pride, arrogance will prevent you from being intimate with the Holy Spirit. Will prevent you from being intimate with the Holy Spirit. Then lastly, disobedience to God will just push you totally away from the Holy Spirit some are experts at disobeying God God speaks they don't want to listen until something now goes wrong ah, the woman the woman comes here but she was my former teacher in school she came to me and said Jill uh, I found an accommodation um, I'm going to move in. Pray on my anointing oil. I want to go and anoint the house. So, out of interest, I asked, Why is the house? So, it's at the back of the cemetery. So, Madam, don't go. Don't leave behind the cemetery. She said, but why? So because all kinds of spirits move in that environment. Aborted babies, murdered people, spirits of the aggrieved. Oh, she looked at my face. She said, sir, I will move there. They are dead, I am living. Let the dead mind their business. May I mind my business? I said, Okay, ma. No problem. She moved in. One day she came home. She was hearing the smell of food in her flat somebody was cooking a goosey soup in her flat she opened the door didn't see anybody went to the kitchen and found hot a goosey soup boiling on a cooker she was startled she put up the cooker anointed the goosey soup and threw it away and continued to stay there a week later 
she came again and found yams she didn't have yams at all somebody was boiling yams in her kitchen was then she ran back to me and said ha ah, this is what is happening I said, why are you running madam why, why did you throw away the egg soup why did you throw away the egg why don't you eat it say ah, eat what I don't know I got there she ran away that's not the end of the story but what I'm bringing out God wants 100% obedience 99% will not do make up your mind from this month that you will be intimate with the Holy Ghost rise to your feet now and all eyes closed all eyes closed in case you are here this morning you are not born again and you have not surrendered your life to Jesus do so very quickly now do so very quickly now also you can use the opportunity to consult our counselors you see their numbers on the screen we are ready to pray with you and talk to you but if you are here physically with us now or you are online listening to us say what I'm going to say after me so, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you now. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Take control of my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you said that short prayer with me. Don't rush him. Wait and see our ministers before you go. Also, you can con connect our numbers from the screen and use it to contact us thank you Jesus you are going to pray these are not gentlemen's prayers prayers to break anything blocking you from getting close to God it's not a gentleman's prayer because the devil does not want anybody to get close to God the devil doesn't want anybody to get close so this is why it's not a gentleman's prayer the first prayer I want you to pray it's a deep prayer but if you don't understand it well you will not pray it well say every enemy outside using the enemy inside to fight me can I hear the sister say shouting that the sisters are not aggressive enough this month the sisters are still not aggressive enough Brothers, let me hear you roaring like thunder. Everybody shouting it loud. Damn! In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and pray.
Yes. 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 prayers of open eyes in the spirit and pray it very very well pray it very very well lay your hands on your two eyes and sing this song louder than anyone around you sing it loud and clear sing it with your spirit and sing it louder than anyone around you. Thank you, Jesus. Open my eye. Oh. Hallelujah. My story. Can I hear you shouting that? That somebody needs to shout that prayer loud. In the name of Jesus. Divine dreams that will change my story. Jesus name we pray with a voice of authority say I bind every demon polluting my vision and dreams in the name of Jesus
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus name we pray satanic notice board in my father's house whether you understand this prayer point or not pray with fire and with power satanic notice board in my father's house catch fire in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and say it. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. I bless you in the name of the Lord. You are going in, you are coming out, shall be blessings. You go from strength to strength and from glory to glory. No weapon from against your destiny shall prosper. The Spirit of God will move your life forward. You shall prosper. You shall succeed. 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 In the name of Jesus. Cover you and your family with the blood of Jesus. The Lord blesses you from Zion and make his face to shine upon you. All the prayer requests, oh Lord, answer them by fire. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And let us share the grace of fellowship. Surely. All the days of our shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Seven Goliath, destroy now. Hallelujah. Let's go. Hallelujah.